Well, the lure of the lines about two African families, one white and the other black, whose lives were changed by the Idi Amin regime. And in 1971, I had the opportunity to go to East Africa. And my traveling partner and I had arranged a 10-day safari in Kenya and Tanzania. And we had about five days free. We were just going to play it by ear. And we decided just serendipitously to go to Uganda and fell in love with the country, found the Africa there that I'd been looking for. It was actually better than the Disney ride <laughs> you know, of Africa. And then when I got home and started hearing about all the atrocities committed by the Idi Amin regime, a story just started to slowly develop in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I decided, though, when the opportunity presented itself to actually write the book, that I needed to do it justice by doing some first-hand research. So I took my two teenage sons out of school for a year, and we ended up in Europe and East Africa. We were in East Africa for almost six months. The cover is from online. Okay. <laughs> so this is the second edition. The first edition, I didn't find the photo that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And then when I um, ended up doing the, the next edition, this photo was available. So it coincides with the section of the book, though. Oh, no, I, because I did it myself. I did not even try an established publisher because I knew of the automatic rejection policy and I didn't want to give up copyright so I decided just to do it myself. And with today's technology it's almost like <laughs> that's the way you do right. because unless you're a very established author they're not going to promote you anyway. So you have to do your own promotion. Mm -hmm. So this way it was very actually simple. I went with a company called Ex Libris, mm -hmm. a subsidiary of Random House and it was actually the the publishing was the less traumatic, but the, as far as the writing, I call this my third baby with a 20-year gestation period. <laughs>